Mega colon is a condition defined as persistent uh, dilatation and lengthening of the colon. Mega colon is uh, divided into two forms non toxic mega colon and toxic mega colon. These both entities you can pick on the abdominal x rays. There are certain reasons for the non toxic uh, mega colon and toxic mega colon. But before going to talk about all that, you need to look for 369 rules which shows the exact diameter of the small bowel, the large bowel, and the cecum. So it will show you the normal caliber of the dilatation of the small and large bowel. If it goes beyond that limit, then it would be considered as mega colon. Normal diameter of the small bowel should have been less than 3 cm on abdominal radiograph. So far the large bowel diameter is concerned, it should have been less than 6 cm. If you are looking for the appendix, so appendix should have been six, less than 6 mm. If it gets dilated more than 6 mm, then you can think of appendicitis. As far as the cecum diameter is concerned, it should have been less than 9 cm. Any measurement beyond that limit would be considered as dilated. So for the mega colon is concerned, mega colon terms apply when the large bowel distend or dilate more than 9 cm. In some of the researcher it says if it is more than 6 cm, you can still apply the term of mega colon and when it reach up to 9 cm or more than 9 cm there is a chance of perforation and you need to uh, seek immediate surgical emergency it would be considered as surgical emergency and you need to seek surgical attention So this abdominal radiograph shows mega colon and it is non-toxic mega colon without any mural abnormalities. If you look to this radiograph, you can appreciate dilated large bowel. So ascending colon is visible, transverse is visible and descending colon as well. These are all visible but if you look inside there is no mural abnormality there is no mucosal abnormality so this type of a mega colon would be considered as non-toxic mega colon without mural abnormalities and there are certain reasons for the uh, mega colon so this is the list of the differential if there is any distal obstruction so proximally you will see that the bowel would be dilated and this would be considered that if the size of the bowel or the caliber of the bowel more than 6 cm this would be considered as mega colon but if there is no mural abnormality especially in distal obstruction there will be no mural abnormality the second differential is paralytic ileus paralytic ileus is actually intestinal pseudo obstruction and that is because of impairment of the muscle contractions that move food through the digestive tract if this happens, that consider uh, this condition would be considered as paralytic ileus, and due to paralytic ileus, there will be mega colon without mural abnormalities. The third differential for the mega colon is chronic pseudo obstruction. If there is chronic obstruction, and that is pseudo type of obstruction, so this will again cause uh, mega colon, and there will be no uh, intramural abnormalities. Because of fecal impaction, sometimes uh, mega colon happens, uh, large intestine gets enlarged up to an extent where its diameter ranges more than 6 cm, but this uh, you would be able to see fecal uh, contents in there, so that would be because of the fecal impaction, maybe due to chronic constipation is one of the reasons for that type of a mega colon. Hersprung is a birth defect in which uh, there is no nervation or innervations to the particular part of the intestine or in other words you can say there is a lack of innervation to the intestine so because of uh, that the intestinal peras peristalsis will not happen and as a result there will be dilated bowel loops and uh, there will be constipation so because of these two reasons if there is no innervation and you come across with 
a mega colon especially in children this would be considered as Hirschsprung disease and it can easily be picked on barium anema so just put the barium anema or sometime on plain radiographer you can plain radiograph you can also pick these points sometime in chronic constipated patients they use laxatives so if any abuse of laxative medicines happens it will result into megacolon so definitely the patient will give rise the history of use of laxative because of use of laxative uh, this is likely to occur and megacolon will happens on the x-ray you will appreciate megacolon on the x-rays amyloidosis is a serious condition although it's very rare but still uh, you may come across with amyloidosis and it may leads to megacolon uh, this is an abnormality of the protein and uh, which is called as amyloid and it start depositing in the certain organs and tissues of the body uh, that condition is called as amyloidosis if there is amyloidosis so there is a chance of megacolon but this megacolon would be of a non-toxic type and there will be no intramural abnormalities Now come to the next and very important point that is megacolon but this is called as toxic megacolon with severe mural abnormalities. Look for this uh, radiograph on that radiograph you can appreciate distended large bowel and these black arrow indicating intraluminal abnormality slightly production of the soft tissues densities you can appreciate alongside the walls of the large intestine large bowel and uh, this is more than three centimeter the dilatation of this large bowel is more than three centimeters so this would be considered as toxic megacolon with mural abnormalities and uh, uh, there are certain reasons the first main reason for the toxic megacolon is uh, inflammatory bowel disease so always consider inflammatory bowel disease when you come across such type of a features on the x-rays this another radiograph shows the same characteristics these red arrows indicating intramural abnormalities this is again a, a toxic megacolon with intramural abnormalities so far the differential for the uh, toxic megacolon is concerned the one is the very important one is uh, inflammatory bowel disease the second is infectious colitis if there is inflammation of the colon so toxic megacolon happens but beside this there will be mucosal irregularity mucosal abnormality sometimes there will be thumb printings and uh, there will be mural abnormalities as well the third uh, differential is ischemic colitis ischemic colitis is usually seen in senile or elderly patients because of some uh, thrombosis or because of atherosclerotic changes so as a result uh, large intestine uh, do not get proper blood supply as a result it get ischemia and because of the ischemia toxic megacolon happens so again have a look for the differentials of the toxic megacolon with severe uh, mural abnormalities including uh, inflammatory bowel disease uh, the second comes infectious colitis and the third comes ischemic colitis these three are very narrow differentials always look for if on the uh, abdominal x-rays or on barium studies you come across any enlargement of the large bowel associated with the uh, intramural abnormalities directly jump into these three conclusion as far as toxic megacolon is concerned a uh, barium anima is contraindicated so this you can pick only on simple radiograph simple uh, radiograph will radiograph will provide you sufficient information that you can easily diagnose toxic megacolon with mural abnormality